Hi, this is Chris Rosencutter with Mecca. This is a brief video to explain the basics of how to get started using Mecca Stack. Uh, there is a menu system across the top of the screen and basically you start from left and work your way right as you fill in data. So we're going to start with the file menu. It's just like most Windows programs. The only thing we need to fill in here is maybe project information. Okay, and once you have that, we're going to start with the uh, design field. So we're going to go to design code. And we're just going to accept uh, the default, which is ASME STS. I'm going to change this to 90 miles per hour wind. Exposure C, category 3. Um, there's several other fields here. We won't get into all of that now. We're just going to take the default. And then we're going to go to load combinations. Uh, as long as you're not modifying and doing anything custom, these will all be uh, automatic. So we're going to leave it that way. Uh, reference elevations. This is if you had a stack that was elevated, maybe on, on a hill or not a hill, but a, a building or up elevated. Or if you wanted to modify the base of your stack to be uh, something other than zero, like if you're you're in a plant and you have certain elevation uh, grade is above zero, you would specify that here. Damping, we're going to pick uh, structural damping per STS. Uh, we don't have any damping device. It's unlined stack, rigid base, and then it determines the damping based on those selections. Seismic, I'm going to say we don't have any seismic on this one. Uh, next is live load. We're going to pick 50 PSF. And then pressure. Uh, we're going to say this is a uh, 50 foot tall stack and it's got a 2 PSI pressure. And we're going to use a 0.7 joint efficiency which would be 70%. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save uh, the data I've entered so far. Okay, now we're going to go to the geometry screen. So we're 50 foot tall. Uh, we're going to have a stack that's 2 foot diameter at the top at 30 feet we're going to have a cone, so we'll still be 2 feet, and at 25 we go to 4 feet. Now when we click OK, there's some information here to help you understand what I just did, but when you click OK, you're going to see graphically what we just entered. And so if there was a mistake, you could go back and fix it now. So again, I'm going to save. Uh, thickness of the stack. We start from the top and work our way down. So I'm just going to assume that it's uh, 3 8 inch over the entire stack. And if you look here you can see it's it's reflecting the 3 8 inch. It said 0 a minute ago. The corrosion allowance for the stack. Oops. I'm going to use a 16th of an inch which is 1.6 millimeters nothing on the screen gets updated for that. Uh, the material, uh, there's a lookup screen. I'm going to use A36. I'm going to say my maximum temperature is 300 degrees F. And it's going to import those values from the database. I don't, I'm not going to use stiffeners, uh, stiffening rings, my boundary conditions. For this it's a freestanding stack so at the bottom it's going to be fixed in all six directions. All three translational directions and all three rotational directions. Okay, then we save it. Now we're working over to the attachment screen. So I'm going to say that I've got a... Uh, actually, I'm going to use the automatic generator. So it brings up a screen. I'm having to drag this these menus over because they're going over to my second monitor. We're going to say the top of the ladder is at 38 feet, the bottom is at zero, and we're going to have rest platforms every 30 feet. So when you click generate, it's going to generate some some platforms based on what we just entered.
Okay, I'm not going to use any piping. I'm going to ignore the rest of these for now. It's not that uh, important for the example. Uh, my base plate. I'm going to say that I have a single base plate with gussets. I'm going to use the standard. So I'm going to say it's an inch and a half bolt. And I've got eight of them. So I can click right now on this drawing button. And it'll show me graphically what I've just entered. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to click OK. And you'll also see it's added it to our overall drawing as well. Uh, let's see details. So that's the only details I have. So now I've, I've saved it. Now I'm going to perform an analysis. It brings up this screen. I'm going to select that I want to display all of this criteria. Um, this is uh, some other analysis options you might want to look at. There's more information in the help on all this. That's why I'm going through it so quick. And now I get my analysis. Anything on the left side here that's black means it's uh, it's just it's information. It's not necessarily a, a pass or a fail. If it's red, that means there's a pass-fail check in there, and red means it failed. It's just like a stoplight. Um, green means it's okay. There is no yellow. So I've got some problems on this stack. It looks like it's got a looks like it's got vortex shedding issues. We're failing right here, and it's in the vortex shedding case. So I'm going to go back and, uh, and put a damping pad. So I went to my damping menu, brings up this screen for a damping pad. I'm going to have an inch thick damping pad, and I'm going to use a uh, quarter inch thick leveling plate. Okay, now what I entered is showing up here. So now my damping pads. Go back and do an analysis. Okay, now everything's working except the, uh, we've got some failures of this uh, stiffening ring and shell thickness criteria. Um, and there's actually another video that talks about common problems with STS, and I'd recommend you go to that one to get more explanation on how to fix this problem. But other than that, if you look over in the left here, everything is passing, everything's green, there's only one red except this one, and um, so we've got a, a design that's almost complete. Now what you do now is you've got all these check boxes to decide what you're going to print. Right now I've got everything checked. So if I just say check summary, it'll go through and just pick some of the more important items and then I can go through and modify that accordingly and say okay I want to print um, I want to print some of these other screens. Okay so everything that's checked is going to get printed and then at the bottom here there's an option that says automatically include page, bre page breaks in the printed output. So that means if you have a, uh, let's just pick one of the, okay like this section here, base plate, it runs on for quite a while. It's going to be more than one page. So what this is saying is after the base plate's finished uh, printing, if you have this checked, it's going to put a clean page break for the next major uh, section of the report. If I don't have that checked, it's just going to keep printing continuously. So I get it, it makes for a little more sloppier report uh, if this is not checked, but it's more condensed. It takes up fewer pages. So I'm going to go ahead and say put page breaks in and then click generate output. Now everything that I had checked is getting included in one report. Uh, then expand. Uh, everything is in one report that I have checked here, but, but the ones that are not checked are not included. So now I can either save it as a uh, text file, a, a rich text file, which you can read with any word processor, or you can uh, print it, or you can print preview. If you print preview, you can see you can see how the reports uh, format a page up and down will scroll you through 
Okay, so that's kind of clean looking if you look at the breaks. I'm going to show you what it would be like if I wouldn't have selected that page break option. Okay, it's very similar, but it's hard to tell, but you can actually see this table spilled over from that page to this one. Um, and this one looks like it's spilled over. So there's just, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit sloppier, but it's, it's more condensed. You can see it right here. Here's the headers, and then the content of that table was spilled over to here. That would not have happened if I had the checkbox on. Okay, there's a lot more detail within the help manual on any one of these screens, but this gives you a, a quick overview of how to get started. Thank you.